Skype get some competition. Building a Pi powered rover. Mozilla makes it rain. And the Leave Room 5 secures some good old wet sticky funding. Hmm. It's another great day for Linux, everyone. Let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, and take that midweek break to talk about the cool things that we found going on in the world of, well, what well, was frozen penguins, penguin sauce. We, we got to do something new this week, man. Uh, uh, I don't know. Peng- pe- penguin sickles? Pumpkin spice <laughs> penguins, man. Pumpkin <laughs> oh, spice pe- penguins. Pe- pe- Penguin spice. Penguin spice. Penguin spice. Man, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, eject. Poof. All right. Hey, look, look who it is. Somebody already got me the, the eject button. That is one Jordan Swang. You might not know him if you don't watch our Saturday gaming show. That kind of business that we do. He is um, currently our Finnish correspondent. Um, yep. And, you know, Pedro. Hello. He's over there doing his thing. Uh, what's been going on, guys? Uh, uh, Jordan, why don't you start us off? You're the one in Finland? Uh, yeah, no, um, work transferred me out to Finland, and so I flew out on, uh, Saturday, actually just before the LGC Weekly started, and that's why you had the MT there. So I've, I've recently just recovered from jet lag, sorta, kinda, not really, and I'm getting accustomed to life in Helsinki. This bed behind me is really, really bad because it's actually two smaller beds pushed together and I keep falling through the crack in the middle of the night. (laughs) Okay. Well, around here, look what arrived. Yes. It's the Asus B350 Plus uh, motherboard for the uh, Ryzen uh, 5 1600. Uh, so now I'm just waiting till payday so I can buy the RAM because that is nowadays the most um, expensive part. I'm so going are, to be dropping. are you going to try and unlock the core, the the two remaining cores? Oh, absolutely! He's going to brick <laughs> it on the first day. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> I don't have a lot to report. I bought a like two pound cable from Taiwan or China that arrived. So. I mean, right. if, you, if you ask the Chinese, it's the same place, but uh, yeah. All right. How about we see what Mozilla is up to this week? Because uh, they've been writing some mad checks, man. Oh, yeah. They've been giving a lot of people a lot of money. Well, not a lot of money, but just enough. Uh, they're, since their last update, they've made a total of $539,000 in additional rewards. So the biggest uh, chunk that they gave went to Ushahidi. An open source software platforming for crowdsourcing, monitoring, visualizing, and responding to reports. So I guess that's something. And they also have a few other um, open source projects that you may or may not have heard of. One of which had Brian Lunduke very riled up this week. <laughs> um, man, I, I'm I, I'm not getting into that because I, like we were talking about in the notes, like 73, 74 percent positive that that was just to get some controversy oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> it worked it it worked. Spool, spool, spool up the bugger bugger drive mm-hmm. yeah no there, there's some uh there's some interesting stuff in here too uh mod md is a very interesting project because you get out of the box let's encrypt support which makes um setting up ssl infrastructure really really easy and if apache just automatically does it for you then you know all the better uh yes. that that ushadi thing is interesting as well because it's sort of like a, a counter surveillance state thing. It's an mm-hmm. interesting concept. I'm curious if it actually will go anywhere. Um, and Phaser, of course. Uh, Mozilla loves their web gaming. Um, and that's I, I actually I actually know the guy who wrote the Xbox 360 controller support for um, for Firefox. So yeah. they've 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 been they've been dipping their foot in the uh, gaming space for years now. So I, I mean, it's not. Uh, I'm I'm glad that they're using what little money they have left to try and fund better web stuff, but you know maybe maybe so, save some of that to improve Firefox, make it a little more. Oh, I'm sure they're saving is, some man. of I mean, that. They're, they're definitely doing a good thing. You know, the Webpack, Rise Up, Phaser, ModMD is really cool, like you said, and Ushadi, I yeah, or if you want to do that, that I don't know. It seems like that's duplicating efforts. But then again, I was going to say because Twitter, but. Then again, Twitter does seem kind of um, happy and quick to like shut certain sections down when they're asked mm-hmm. to. So, 
Some sometimes. Sometimes, but, yeah. man. So uh we were talking about Skype getting a little bit of competition. Maybe not the competition you wanted and probably not the competition Linux deserves because um Discord, they've been playing around with the video and they've just basically rolled it out, I think. Uh, Friday night, Saturday, or somewhere in there. Video chat, we got it. 10 people, group DM, giggity, that is just as kinky as it sounds, and stop asking for this feature. I'm trying my best not to read this web page because it hurts my brain with grammatical, hey, look how hip we are with our horrible everything. <laughs> um, bunch yeah. of fixes in here and all that fun stuff. So... What I want to propose is here is, uh, are we excited that we finally have another closed source proprietary alternative to Skype? Then that's, um, that, that's still ultimately WebRTC based. So yeah, it uh, is. But uh, to be fair, this court did introduce a great deal, much more control over the WebRTC bits than the competition did. Oh yeah, you no, can the actually app, the app disable uh, auto gain control and uh, echo cancellation from uh discord without having to futz with your sound card all that much mm -hmm. I, I i learned recently that uh if you want to uh have discord uh working in fedora you need to make sure that you have uh, lib g plus plus installed because otherwise you get some interesting exceptions that aren't immediately mm -hmm. apparent unless you uh, pull up the developer console in because it's a chrome app of course well it is chrome <laughs> that's definitely one thing they need to fix another thing they've added is picture in picture mode screen sharing a bunch of cool things, and I do believe this is going to drink Skype's milkshake, especially you know, they already had the chat and everything down for the gamers. Yep. A lot of people were using that for voice chat and communications, and Microsoft, man, whatever they're doing with that latest beta of Electron Rap, nope. <laughs> and again, Discord, it's Electron Rap. It's all right. It's all right. It's, yeah, sli it's slightly less nope. Yeah, it's slightly in nice nope. If they needed to fix anything, if you were asking me, which no one ever does, Zathvin, um, if they could change audio inputs, people, if you're making a Chromium lecture on something, don't make your recording inputs all just say Chromium. It gets confusing when you have like nine of them. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, if they could sort that, that'd be great. I'd be very happy with that. And multiple instances, so you could actually split them out to different inputs. But... Um, Risk. Risk is making oh. a comeback, Pedro. Risk is the new... Next week, oh, yeah. uh, we're all going to throw away our x86 processors. Well, well I mean, according to uh, Sci-5, uh, we will be throwing them away in 2018, because according to them, uh, 2018 will be the year of Risk 5 processors on Linux. Well, it, it certainly won't be the year of the Linux desktop, so... No, 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 it's, no, it's, it it's, it's, it's got to be the year of something. But yeah, no, basically the article boils down to a little bit of an interview that they did with, uh, what's his name? Jack Kang, the VP of product and business development at Sci5. And, well, he goes on to say that, uh, it's been easy for critics to dismiss Risk V because it's only been an embedded systems thus far, but they've now taken Risk V commercially beyond embedded Linux and into processing applications. And then they go on to say that uh, basically they need the open source community to develop the software for us because all they did up to this point was get a compiler working. So everyone else will have to kind of make their own time and help them support their uh, platform, which if you may remember, AMD kind of tried that. And um, at the I, end, I, 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 they... Sorry, continue. Go ahead. No, at the end, uh, they had to hire some developers to work on it because no one's going to develop stuff for your hardware, no matter how good it is, if you're trying to pot off development of the second layer of software on unpaid labor. Interestingly enough, Arma adopted that strategy and succeeded like hotcakes. Mm -hmm. um, of, co of course, they, they uh, used a lot more uh, industry connections. They, they mm -hmm. partnered with Red Hat and Canonical and IBM and Microsoft because they, they actually want to see server-grade ARM become a thing. But at the same time, they just got the people talking. They didn't they didn't really contribute um, much in the way of like cross-compilers or anything like that. Um, they provided reference architecture. They provided full documentation for people. 
Well, um, I mean, you, you got to imagine Arm's really good at that because that's all Arm yeah. is. I mean, they, they don't make anything. <laughs> they're a licensing right. company. Well, they yeah. made the technology, but yeah, yeah. They, they, they did. And, you know, ri- ri- risk processor is not necessarily open risk, but are basically everywhere. You're yeah. like my uh, my uh, Xiaomi Redmi Note 4 has a 10 core ARM CPU, 64 bit running at two gigahertz, which is kind of nuts. Well, I mean, it, uh, I think it's the whole thing. Uh, NVIDIA kind of chimed in in this article and they're like, yeah, man. Because NVIDIA is about to start making a lot of money with the autonomous driving bits. And uh, they were going to use it in to increase the por- performance of Falcon. Uh, yeah. I, I could see that uh, when it comes down to adoption. I, I think that's going to be the sticky, sticky, icky of it. Because, yeah. uh, well, he- here's the thing. If it's a wicked good project, but yet, yeah, Jordan, you also have a point. Arms already made inroads into the data center, man. It's, yeah, it's to there. Be fair, and Nvidia yeah, themselves Facebook already have the Del- uh, Maxwell Del- uh, X1 ARM SOC. And if we're being honest, what Nvidia is going to be using it for is another embedded product. You know, the one that everyone's dismissing Risk Five because that's all it's been using. It's all it's been used for. So yeah, they're not really changing anything i i mean you you got you gotta you gotta provide the actual tangible benefit right with arm they came out the gate and said our with uh the calzada which was a texas company that uh put out some of the first server grade arm stuff they they made a fairly bold claim and they were able to back it up that says we're able to get in distributed workloads uh equi- equivalent performance to x86 using 50 percent of the power space and cooling so yeah. you're going to need to get you're going to need to have some sort of implementation of this risk chip to that can give you some sort of tangible real benefit say hey this actually has some application in your data center right now mm-hmm. yeah i don't know with Which adoption is something risk doesn't have to be fair we'll, we'll see man this is a neat project i'm surprised it's gotten this far and there's stuff to do with it. And if it's really useful, uh, you know, Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. Because I was yeah. having this exact or completely kind of an arm thing with the Kindle, the Kindle Fire HD 10.1 they just released <clears throat> today or yesterday for like 150 quid. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, you don't want to. I was like, do you understand this is a 1080p, 10 inch tablet? I have a point. Trust me. Uh from Amazon, not from a manufacturer that you can't pronounce, there will be, this thing will be hacked and the software will be made for lineage and everything else by the end of the week. Be- See, I, re- I really wish something like that would have come out like a week ago because I bought a Samsung 10 inch tablet for 300 bucks. <laughs> if I could have picked that up for 200 Canadian, then, <laughs> oh, Amazon, you could have had my money, uh, but you didn't. You're probably still in that return window. Hey, uh, another thing that's going to be running ARM 100% is Purism. Ooh, Librem. Is it Librem? Michael, I've been calling it Libra. Librem. Yeah, Li- 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 Libram sounds about right. Hey, man, you know, this is the project I love. I want to believe it's a, it's a real boy, and they blew past their goal. Uh, they needed 1.5 million wet, stinky caches. They're currently at 1.607128 with 12 days to go. That's 107% funded. This all sounds great. What is it? You've never heard of it. Most of you have. This is the uh, Linux smartphone that we've all wanted, or tablet. I'm more on the tablet side. It's but a big phone. It's a big phone. I want to believe in this so hard, but uh, here's the truth, man. Here's the real truth. You, you can't make a smartphone for $1.5 million. You, you, you can you, probably get a concept out. Well, yeah, money. Here's, maybe you could get some VC firms interested. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you look at uh, Ubuntu. They went for... Uh, what was it? Their their goal for the Ubuntu phone was thirty two million dollars. That's realistic. Yeah. When uh, the campaign for, wrapped up, yeah, for they the had like for the them. edge and but they're saying this is going to be able to roll out for five hundred and ninety nine dollars. So for an unlocked device, that's not crazy. If this thing delivers, one thing I have always liked about this project, they're like hardware kill switch. It will kill your mic, kill your mm-hmm. camera, and looking forward to that. Uh ecosystem make or break though i mean yeah can i watch I mean, youtube on it because well, if it's running debian it, you can install vlc right 
that that that's kind of the thing though is well you you'll you'll need to have like these mobile optimized interfaces in order for the standard panoply of Linux apps to work, right? Mm. Yeah. And uh it wouldn't hurt. I mean, that's completely unrealistic to expect, but Android compatibility, if they could get that to work, it would be awesome because it would get rid of quite a lot of the uh lack of software issues. But, of course, that is all relying on Google, whether or not they kind of want to open the API to whatever they're using right now for the Chromebooks. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see because we've seen this before with the uh, the Ubuntu mobile thing. Fire, and the the Fire, so. Firefox phone. Yeah, I mean, lots, lots of people have tried to, yeah, people, people have tried to make inroads. But yeah. you already have a very established market, and I do. I do love this chart that you're seeing right now. That's just like, yeah, we we've picked all our points that we can say yes to mm. that all the other products don't. Which is, I I, I mean, that that that's that's I, I don't know. I, I just find that very very funny. I don't but know, the, man. The, I mean, like one of the weird things is, <sighs> I'm not being mean. I'm not being rude. I'm just being honest here. Is like the usability, I mean, if you're supporting the project, that's great. That's awesome. Everyone, because this is this is one of the unicorn devices that a lot of us have always wanted. But yeah. then it kind of you get that argument. It's like the end user never knows what they need. The outside of being able to make calls, this is going to be about as useful as a flip phone for productivity. Unless you do everything. If, if we get a copy, if that's actually you can watch YouTube on that. I know, I'm just yeah. using, but I'm talking about Google Docs now. If we can get a build of Chromium running on it, and you can do everything if it's not powerful enough. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 the one thing is you could, you could turn something like this into like a type of convergence device. Mm -hmm. and if, you can, if you can get the UI lightweight enough and you can get like the mode switching working properly, then you, could maybe, the go, you, you could maybe go after that holy grail that Canonical was trying to get at and then just failed spectacularly. Yeah, yeah. and I guess at the end of the day, that's really... That's what I am hoping for anyway. Maybe Librem will succeed. Everyone said that Librem wasn't going to be able to do like the Librem 7, their laptop. They weren't going to be able to do all open source everywhere. And to be fair, they still haven't, but they're getting close. Very close. Yeah, I, I still want that Linux-based ARM laptop that's never going to actually be produced. That's, Did, that's, that's, my, that's listen, my dream device. Buy a Chromebook and install Crouton. Just like there. battery technology, it's only 10 years away, man. Don't worry about it. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just hold my breath. <gasps> uh, this is not ARM-based at all. No, no, it's not. Uh, this is very much an x86-based, and it comes from Office Store, uh, which uh, it's uh, they have, like... Uh, Linux laptops, uh, they use the, um, let's see, they use actual endless OS or, let's see, eh, doesn't really immediately say, but yeah, they're using a Linux distro and yeah. Pedro, there are Pedro, two. Pedro, Pedro, it's Linux yes. since 2017. It uses whatever you install on it. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alpha, and Alpha there are OS, two which is, which is a fork of elementary, apparently. Oh, it's a fork of elementary. Okay. Uh, so, uh, they have two new laptops, which come with their particular fork of elementary. Uh, one, the Centurion Nano is an ultralight laptop with heart pounding performance. It's got the i5-7200U and it can go up to 16, uh, gigs of RAM, uh, one terabyte of SSDs and you can actually upgrade the RAM to 32 gigs, which is, they say that they took... You know, their feedback from their previous um, uh, Linux laptop, which was the Lightbook. And a lot of people commented, said that they wanted a better keyboard, a better touchpad. So, to be fair, they did that. And besides the Centurion Nano, you also have the Centurion Alpha, which instead of a 13.3-inch screen, you get a 15.6, which is, I guess... Uh, what you'd expect from a 15.6 ultrabook style um, computer, which comes with the, uh, you actually get a choice between the i5-7200 and the i7-7500U, and you can also have up to 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. Oh, man. Uh, if, you, if you max out the Nano, it's 999, so it's evil when it yeah. uh, does head and handstands, man. That's uh... Indeed. It's just under that uh, mystical uh, $1,000 mark, 
But it uh, both of those laptops look very similar to the uh, N one thirty one BU Clevo. I don't know. I, I thought they looked kind of a familiar minus a KDE logo. Oh, <laughs> the, the tiny one looks similar to the slim book. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I wonder how badly it bleeds. Jordan, are you in the market for this? Uh, it was definitely like one of the complaints. That these things are priced right. I definitely looked at it with well, the i7 configuration clocking in at, um, what did I end up with? Starting at 699 basically not much in the way of options, though, but basically yeah, specking I, it out. What, 1049 for an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, 900 and whatever uh, gig SSD. That's not bad for an aluminum no, it, it it really it really isn't. Um, and on, on, honestly, I'd like a. I mean, it, it would be nice to have a dedicated GPU option. But if I were looking for something like lightweight that I could do work on and then throw mm-hmm. in a bag and take on a plane or something, um, the 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 one the one thing I would be concerned about is battery life because, of course, Linux battery life on laptops has always been a sticky issue, and there's always mm-hmm. need to, you always needed to make uh, dirty hacks. Oh come on! I, I look forward to the email next week about the person who's been running without charging for years. Yeah, yeah. no, they actually I, I, do a I, very I mean, good yes, job of not mentioning the, battery life well, uh, well, no, in the no, announcement at all. <laughs> instead of a battery, it's a diesel generated that they just they just perpetually fill, right? <laughs> so it doesn't really help with affordability, but or the or the fumes. And the one uh, reply, comment, whatever you want to call it, that they have on the announcement is someone asking for a 3.2 aspect ratio. Really? That's a deal breaker? 69 to you is a deal breaker? I like, like, 4 by 3 aspect ratio. I do. Uh, but it's not a Pedro, deal of course breaker. you like 4 by 3 because you're wrong. But Because, because <laughs> you're a square, that's why. I'm telling you, man. That, that's another one of the various, various reasons... I didn't buy the new Pixel from Google because they messed with my 16.9. I, I want to watch my little movies all stretched out because I feel... If it wasn't, uh, like, uh, insanely expensive... Uh, You're talking the, the to Pixel, a person who has Pixel a $500 really- Nexus 10 Gen 1, all right? Listen, I'm <laughs> I, see, I actually like 16.10. I wish that would make a comeback. The Samsung tablet I have uh, has that, and I, and I love it. I, I, I like the little extra space on the bottom. It's nice. All right. Yeah. Well, on that weird aspect ratio, you might fire up a copy of Plasma 511 because it's uh, also available. It's out. Yeah. You may remember a while back we talked about the beta. Well, this is the uh, roll up with a, just actually a significant amount of new fixes that they introduced. And it comes with the uh, new system settings design, some notification history. They improved the test manager a little bit and they include now Plasma Vault which is that per uh, directory uh, encryption, if that's your type of thing. Uh, they also have the um, Wayland magic that lets you have one desktop session and you can have different DPI settings per monitor, which is awesome. Something that's been, you know, at least uh, I know Ven uh, for a fact has been asking for that because... Going from a 4K monitor to a 1366 tiny dinky monitor. If you adjust the DPI, you're going to have issues. But I had oh, a look Pedro, through their Pedro, change. Don't, don't forget about the 1080p monitors in between. Yes, and those. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and, and, also and, 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 have and then, the, then you throw the, the change uh, log. nine monitor too that right. Ben's getting and then you just lose sleep. Yeah, the, the full change log, you can find it at the bottom, and they literally have a commit submitted to libtask manager just called dash dash crashes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and all they changed was a couple of lines uh, to remove an ampersand, so I guess that got rid of some of the crashes? Eh. <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I've, I haven't touched Katie in literally years, and I'm right. pretty sure Ven is of yeah. a similar mind. So I've been I, trying I, to I, make I, it work, but admittedly, I'm still using 5.8, because that's the LTS version. That was supposed to be the stable version. It isn't. I'm, I'm sure Foxy and Empty are excited, because they're, they're big uh, KDE fans. So Well, I mean, it is a brutally awesome case, just being able to... They were talking about some Wayland support in there, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe you can catch me up on that, Pedro, in a second. But with the DPI things, that's that's a real problem. I don't have the Creeper Cam hooked up for those. who I'm genuinely surrounded by monitors using <laughs> All every... All different sizes, resolutions, and things. <laughs> different alignments. 
all of them are being 100% used, right? I am maxed out on four monitors. I was like, I can get a fifth, but that's why we're going to get that ultra wide uh, because I hate ultra wide and that'll hurt me. Um, being able, now if they make it easy, another issue I have with KDE is every time I've thrown multiple monitors at KDE, it's like, well, what's this? What are you trying to pull on me, man? <laughs> uh, KDE, the thing is if you have a custom XOR conf, and mm -hmm. you're going into KDE, you can get it to work. You just have to delete all of the KDE configurations and just let it create itself from the XOR conf with all of the monitor configs. If you do ha that... Ha hashtag delete your KDE. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, if you already have like a .KDE folder and it's got some settings in there and it's expect expecting a certain monitor configuration, it's going to have issues or you will have to use their GUI tool to configure it for the session. But yeah, so, it's so, the, so is that all? Is that all X Render based, by the way? Or, or I, I guess uh, I guess here would be using like Wayland Magic because X Render yeah, doesn't really in Wayland, apply to Wayland. In Wayland, it's different. Uh, that's actually one of the things that Five Eleven does. It improves Wayland support considerably. But yeah, uh, I'm assuming the GUI tool that they use for X is still render based. That, that is like the one thing I've never had faith in ever since NVIDIA control panels been a thing. Because every, everybody, even XFCE, does it too. So I'm, I'm not picking favorites. There. It's like, here's our own customized thing to adjust your screen resolution. Don't, don't waste your time. Okay. I'm, I'm not using that thing. All that thing's going to do is anger me. Unless you're yeah. just using the open source drivers, which is good on you. Then I am. I, I think the last time I tried to open it up on an NVIDIA system just using all the blob drivers, mm -hmm. the, the, the XFCE app was just like, yeah, no, just use the NVIDIA settings. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Um, we got a little bit of Vulcan news. Oh, yes, we do. Specifically, Rad V, Like the completely open source Vulcan driver implementation for Radeon cards, or at least the, uh, the ones based on GCN, what have you. Uh, it works. It has worked for a while, but it wasn't exactly passing the conformance tests for the Kronos group. And Dave Early, uh, you know him. He's been software engineer at Red Hat for over 10 years in different uh, positions of seniority, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and yeah, uh, according to him, uh, the, he posted a link on this article, which chose a conformant Vulcan listing in the Kronos Group conformance products lists using Mesa 17.2 plus LLVM 5.0, but it's only on the R9285 card for now. They say that, uh, well, uh, Dave says that all you right, can actually... All right, all uh, right, fair question. Um, how old is the R9285 card? What, uh, like a few years. Three, three years now? Because yeah. we're... we're... No, uh, the the Vega cards are six, are they not? So, but uh, I, I mean, here, here's the thing though. The the nice thing about Mesa's architecture is that there's a lot of shared code in between the drivers, mm -hmm. so it will be a lot fast. It'll be a lot faster getting uh, conformance for other yeah, other cards. That's uh, Which, actually what the what he says. Uh, in practice, they pass all the same tests on CIK, CIK and the Polaris GPUs. That's the 480 and the 580. So all they have to do is run the tests and submit them. Chances are they'll probably pass. So kudos to Dave and uh, Bass. They got the RADV driver, a very, very recent driver, to pass all the conformist tests for Kronos. Now, now I'm, I'm, cur I'm curious too, because Kronos, when uh, OpenGL 4.6 came out, they mentioned that a lot of their tests have been open sourced or at least been made code available mm -hmm. to the Mesa team. So, but that, that they, they never really said hide nor hair about Vulcan. So I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, they're actually making, uh, making that available for the RADV drivers. The, the, the other interesting thing too is even, even feral ports. Um, and I think, yeah, I think even like the Linux VR stuff, they recommend you use RADV instead of the, uh, well, RADV, the absolutely. GPU Pro. Yeah, I mean, yeah feral has done like, a little bit of help. I am currently talking with one of the Vulcan people at Feral, like today, regularly, because working on getting an issue resolved. If you follow me on social media, you'll know what that is. Um, mm -hmm. No, that's good to see. Always progress in that. And I think what we all really want is in gaming, I know I'm about to set off some re-drives. Go ahead and spool them up. 
is competition when it comes to gaming. Because right now, I mean, if you're going to spend three to five hundred dollars on a card, you might as well just get an oh, NVIDIA yeah. card, right? And I know you're like, you're going to scream open source. And it's like, are you going to, are you really going to do that and go log into Steam with your DRM and play a closed source game and lecture me about open and source? And not even that. The Radeon driver, the, the open source one, it's very much good. relies on closed source blobs in the kernel. That does the, the thing is, is it's getting good. It yeah, is. I, I, the, the, the one argument I do accept from that camp is you do we do need to get more people using the open source drivers mm -hmm. so that oh, yeah, we can absolutely. find the issues and resolve them and improve the driver from that perspective. And if you're going to if you're going to tout that, then yes, 100 percent. I agree with you. Usage is what get, is what will improve the mm -hmm. driver, period. Absolutely. Just what we're saying is don't argue the point because you're on one team versus the other team. When I'm talking about Team Red or Team Green, get rid of this tribal mentality stuff. Um, blast from the past, but still an interesting read. Why did Compiz die? If you're new to Linux, you're like, Compiz, what's that? And it's like, well, you remember Barrel? You're like, I don't know. I installed Arch. Um, <laughs> right. it, it, it's the cube, man. It that was is the what, cube. That's it was not it got so many the cube, people the wobbly windows. Linux. See, yeah. see what uh, some people what? don't well, listen, man. What some people don't realize is Linux had its killer app back in like 2008, yeah, 2006. Wobbly, wobbly windows, wobbly windows. Yeah. wobbly windows, man. Then we got this cube. Boom. Mine was blown. If Linux was the future, man, you know, Microsoft's going out of business next week. Um, but somebody asked on our Linux, why did Compiz die? And <laughs> the K win maintainer, Actually broken. Uh -huh. So take take everything he says with the massive grain of salt. I don't think he had any reason to be dishonest, but he's going to be a little biased. But um, you can't help it. We're all biased. And he wrote a wall of text kind of explaining what went on and what happened with Compass. Then, Pedro, you, you started. Now, I'm polite, so I don't take other people's content in show notes. So you go ahead and get yours out of the way. Yeah, so. no, uh, it's uh, actually my content on the show notes is uh, completely relevant, sort of. Uh, but yeah, the uh, KWIN maintainer, uh, Martin Graceland, he basically explains that when KWIN, when they started to implement KWIN, they took the features from Compass that KWIN didn't do, but kept the things that KWIN already did better than Compass because Compass is like a a one size fits all type of thing. It's a window manager and it's a compositor. Now, if you want to use just a compositor to help your window manager not tear whenever you so much as drag a window across the screen, use Compton. Just do it. But if you want a full on window manager which does compositing, right now, from my opinion hey, anyway. Pedro, can I ask you a question? Go ahead. Oh, uh, well, why, why did Compass die? It died because. Well, <laughs> uh, you may remember Unity, you know, that project that Canonical kind of hit the axe on. It was very much based on Compass. And I guess you can sort of put the rest of the story together from there. I, I don't know, man. There's like two parts <laughs> to that. I mean, short story long, yeah, it, but see, I got to look up the timeline, which I didn't have enough time to research. So, but it looks like, you know, the guy who originally developed Compass and, you know, it, the project they attempted to fork it, nobody did that. And the KWIN um, developers, like, you, then it kind of dis dissipated. But reading further down in those comments, all this will be in our show notes, so you can do your own mm -hmm. um, archaeology on this. Is he's like, I it just got too hairy for me. He's like, I don't, don't want to be in charge of this. Humbutu kind of looks like it walked in, saved the project, took it in house. But unfortunately, by taking it in house, the community just went. Oof. Yeah, yeah that, that that Ubuntu CLA was the death knell for a lot of projects, just because of the notion of Canonical coming in and saying, "Hey, you 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 made this, I made this, it's mine now. <laughs> this is ours." <laughs> yeah, uh, re really drove a lot of people away. And to uh, to uh, Steve and Strider's point, yes, you can still actually use Compass with uh, Mates <laughs> um, if you're so inclined. But I mean, these these days. Uh, I, I am, I am less in the wobbly windows camp and more just get out of the way and give me a terminal it's, camp. Right. To be fair, a compositor is still has its uses mostly to get rid of tearing when doing just now, the now, regular. The, the, the other thing too, I'm not sure if this is still true because 
Uh, they made a lot of advances with like the on-die CPU power governors and whatnot that are actually cooked into the processors now. But it's also slightly better for battery life too because your CPU has to spin up and it has to do the turbo boost stuff to uh, in, in, in order that. to do the processing. And with the GPU, it's because it can map that it can map brings everything up onto like the GPU. my second point, which is why KWIN and XFWM4, if you're using version 4.13 or higher, are right now the best one size fit all window manager slash compositors because they support proper GLX compositing. Yes, you Yay, can argue that glamour. Mutter you can argue that Mutter also does GLX compositing. Go ahead and try to use Mutter and play a video on YouTube in full screen. See what happens. Well ultimately ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, what really actually killed Compass was trying to turn a tech demo into a functioning window manager. Hmm Mm-hmm. Pedro, it, it, you know you know what time it is. I think it's time we take oh, a little did, break. No, Jordan, no, stop! Both of you, put your shirts <laughs> back on, or I'm not going to put, put you back on. The, it is not that. <laughs> well, time. Fine, fine, but I won't put my pants on. Damn it! Oh, well, they, they, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, That's a story about for time a different time. We thank some lovely, lovely people. Oh man, we should thank some of the lovely, lovely people. Who do we have this? I, we have two oh, new. Yes. Executive. Yeah, so we mentioned Hertz uh, uh, last week, but we also have Mike G, which kicked up his uh, Patreon pledge to executive producer level and the Atomic Arts. <laughs> the, the Atomic <laughs> who, who also uh, joined the hollowed halls of the uh, executive it, producers. He, he could be a radioactive donkey. I'm mm -hmm. just saying. Yeah, yeah, he could be. <laughs> No, but that's definitely awesome helping us out. Uh, we're asking for like, you know, buck a week, you know, 16 quarters, 16 quarters mm -hmm. a month. Thinking can help us out, keep the commercial free and all that. And let us spread the love. And oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, right. We got a new agophilia thing. I did oh. that. <laughs> so you so, can. So, uh, so, what? What? I was just, okay, just going to say fine. now, too, you can fund the the uh, chief legal officer of Newegg going after patent trolls. <laughs> Th this is a good thing, yeah. man. Uh yeah, we're not good at promotion and all that. If you could help us out with that and like maybe share the show. I don't know. Uh, everyone shopping through our affiliate links on Amazon. Hopefully, maybe a few people on Newegg will start doing that. But everyone on Amazon, you're blowing it up. I want to thank you so much for doing that. And what a, uh, I, I, we got a wish list. It's not much of a wish list. Stuff pops in, pops out because I don't use it as a wish list. It is the way I force myself to buy stuff by looking at it and it looks back at me that's a thing um currently 104 patrons 212 dollars per well. saturday night mm -hmm. train wreck we're coming up on that next goal that's 250 dollars doing that merch run i might be sneaking another goal in between that but if you are currently a patron you will um look up here in your right hand corner what i'm showing for the video video you have your own customized rss feed for it's super chosen if you are even remotely voyeuristic every saturday we spend an hour in a production meeting you can genuinely be a fly on the wall and listening to that nonsense it's uh, kind of horrifying i have to edit it every sunday morning and yeah empty um, kind of forgot we were doing that it, uh, uh, last what, saturday what pedro was saying is <laughs> it was really good until he was reminded then it's a <laughs> uh, quote, quote, hey, quote unquote production meeting it is pr well yeah, pre pre super shows man and we get some other rewards in there but hey if you want to, that's cool. Uh, support us. Get awesome stuff. If you don't want to support us, man, go find another show, project, or anything you do. Because I don't know. I know Pedro backs people on Patreon. Or back them however you can. Because, you know, it, it's just a cool thing to do. And yes, one dollar. That's like the basics. And if everyone who watches someone, not saying us specifically, watches or listens to what they do, if everyone gave a dollar. Everyone would be making ends meet at this point. Those are euros. Keep 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 it raining, baby. <laughs> no, no. Th th this is a Canadian ten dollar. Oh bill. no, that's a Canadian ten dollar. Look uh, like a five euro bill. Oh, that, that, that's <laughs> that's not even worth the plastic it's printed on. That's... I, actually, this this is this is the five euro bill. Okay. Ah, there it is. <laughs> All right, chilling section is over because it's time for a slice of pumpkin pie. Ooh, it's October. All right, three point one <laughs> spooky. Starbucks is going to sue somebody. Oh, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> this week, we're going to start off with open source Raspberry Pi based robot. 
It's a Martian rover. Yes, that's right. You're thinking XKCD 695. <laughs> Been a good rover? A good rover. Turtle. <laughs> Do I get to go home now? No. Aww, do, you don't. Do, do, does it sing happy birthday to itself if it like if the system clock hits one year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, no, that was the other one. That was the second one they sent. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it's got a mobile app and everything, and you know, of course, you guessed it, the brains right there, Raspi 3. Uh, you get 3D print. Oh, see, I don't need to see stuff like this. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man. You, you can put it on your back, and you can check on the kid that you have in prison in the world. I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, need a food I mean delivery it, it, it's certainly handy for the uh, for the North Korean gulags, hundred <laughs> percent. Oh, that's pretty cool. I, I, I'm oh, yeah. kind of digging that. I, it's just I can't make stuff like that. I don't know about you guys or anyone at home, because I'm not responsible um, enough to have something like that. Yeah, because my yeah. mind immediately look, goes to look, all the bad things I would use it. Not like to hurt people look, or anything Linux like Nuru. that. Linux Nuru. Linux He's the, he's the one who does that stuff. Well, Linux Nuru oh, puts yeah. them on like model cars and stuff like that mm-hmm. and drives them around to fight off the fiber baboons. Real thing. <laughs> you, you learn a lot by doing a Linux gaming show on the weekends. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that, that, that was like the coolest thing about uh, the Raspberry Pi though, is that it makes all these robotics projects super accessible for basically anyone. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, it's like, uh, man there's not a nice way to say that um take two uh, <laughs> oh, oh uh, arduino it's an, it, it, it. yeah it's a simpler arduino you you can control it via bash which is the crazy thing yeah the gpio yeah, is the, all exposed through proc which is which was the, the thing that blew thing. my mind because my, my, my boss actually made a chess playing app that hooks up to an electronic chess board that it's controlled by a bash script huh Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and but yeah, also, I, I think it's a good thing cool. is it's an actual computer too. It's one yeah. thing it has over a lot of devices, and then it has the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. You know, if you are just mean, you could even install Windows 10 on it before you give it to somebody for a Christmas gift. Before like, magic blue <laughs> smoke starts I coming out you. of the <laughs> SOC because. You, you, it, you, it, it tries and then it fails it tries oh my god do i try um really happy to see this next project at braille box probably gonna have to rename that because there's already another company doing that mm-hmm. but um kind of put this together and things like this are massive because i have a visually impaired friend and i've seen the cost of software and mm-hmm. she doesn't really have any like hardware like this she's not 100 percent, but you know she's legally you know can't drive or anything like that and this device basically works with springs pies and it works services as a news reader uh, this is a prototype uh, the creator eventually says he wants to put the board inside which just make it one single piece of kit. But man, I mean, it mimics, it has six, I want to say nipples. Nubs. <laughs> well, it's Nubs. got the pop base, pol- six dots of Braille. Yes. Yeah, uh, to uh, reproduce the alphabet on the fly. And it's like, that's cool. I, well, the, the, the one thing that always confused me about readers like this is what happens if like you miss something or you misread something and you want to go back to double check that? How, how, how does one exactly facilitate that in one of these Braille reader devices? You I got guess to you imagine have to be really like, good at reading Braille at well, that point. Not necessarily. I mean, you could have like a five second skip back feature. Or, no, no, you could. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. Or one yeah, it but, uses, but, uh This one uses Android things and news API to fetch the stories. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's uh, the other button that it has is to like fetch a news story. And I guess it would take some configuring to get the right stories that people want to uh but yeah no this is really good and it's always great to see there was a distro i remember not too long ago uh that had a bunch of new releases i can't remember what it's called but it's uh aimed at people with either well, visual impairments <laughs> visually impaired people that's the that's what yeah. i was trying to say well and uh, and, and to just just as an aside to piggyback on what Ben said before, yes, absolutely. A lot of accessibility hardware and software is ridiculously expensive it's, and limited. Uh, so it's really good that like you get these cool community projects that are trying to fill in that gap and actually make 
uh, make visually impaired people make uh, make hearing impaired people like uh, able able to interact with computers in like mm-hmm. meaningful yep. ways. I forget the name of the uh, project. It has the orca or the whale. Um, mm-hmm. I, I think it's literally just called Orca, the screen reader. Orca, yeah. the screen reader. Yep. <laughs> That's another thing because we I played around with that and yeah, it, it's just good to see stuff. It like genuinely makes me happy that somebody out there is making stuff like that. And it's like good on yeah. you, man. Good on you because I mean that that can make the difference to somebody because the, listen, these companies are not evil. They're whatever but most of the stuff's covered by insurance so they just write whatever imaginary number they yeah. want for their the, software and hardware they're, they're they're profit motivated right so yeah good to see if yeah. uh maybe you want to tell us about your experiences with anything like that or anything we said on the show because you know what we probably got some stuff wrong or maybe you just don't like us or our opinions. Maybe you kind of like us. Maybe you even hate watch us. That's even better. You can head over to LinuxGameCast.com. Why is it there? Because this show is part of a Patreon goal, you know, and um, hit that contact button, Pedro. Then what can they do? Yeah. Well, they can uh, pick from a selection of uh, different types of feedback, hate mail, uh, relationship advice or other uh, beans of contact that they wish to get our way, and then it's just a matter of filling out the rest of the form. It's pretty easy. Although, if you are, uh, you know, sending us some games for review, make sure to include games, game keys, or a build we can share, or something like that. But for this show, you need to pick LWDW and fill out your feedback. Stuff we got wrong. Stuff we got right. Stuff you'd like to add. Just let us know. I'm 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 actually curious. Did someone actually hit the relationship advice button? I'm still waiting on those emails. <laughs> 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 and, and anyways, this is this is from someone talking about the slim book. This is from I can't read that. Count sixty nine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Count sixty nine. Says I'm a fan of KD and it would be nice to support them after ten years of uh, after ten years or more of that I've been having trouble free computing since ditching Windows for Mint and KDE. It's but just a little too much. I think it's aimed at European user business users who are disillusioned with Apple. I might want a generation or, or I might wait a generation or two, but definitely a purchase I would make if I had the money lying around, if only to support KDE. Plus, I've had great success with Linux on Lenovo laptops, but I've seen brand new models with UEFI lockdown issues, which prevents installing anything other than Windows 10 has installed its quick boots. Yeah, that's that 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 is a thing. Bootloader yeah. lockdown. It's it's bad. And most of the Lenovo lockdown issues uh, were actually because of that stupid RAID controller they were using, because there were no drivers for it. Yeah, and the, the other thing, too, about Lenovo is, you know, they actually do want people to run Linux on their computers, because yeah. that that's what IBM uses to develop their Linux software. So, which, um, this was off the KDE book? Yes, the KDE Slim book. And yeah, it is a little bit too much money for not a whole lot of battery life, not a whole lot of performance, not a whole lot of. But then again, I mean, you you, you buy the slim book because you want to support the people in the project behind it. I mean, yeah, just no one has any illusions to the either. Nope. (laughs) Part of your money. That's actually one of the awesome things that slim book does is part of your money goes back to KDE and other open source projects that they rely on. So good on them for that. That almost, almost justifies the price. But that keyboard, damn, that keyboard's horrible. <laughs> last and definitely last, um, Michael, Michael G. Um, so just note, he's like, hey, guys, I just upgraded my patron pledge to the show. Linux community needs, this is why I included it, needs mm-hmm. texture. You guys bring it. Thanks for what you do. To which I immediately responded, texture. I, I mean, we are kind of chewy. This yeah. is a bit of a rough saltiness. No, I like I like texture because out of the um, exploit of deleteds that um, <laughs> we, we can't use on this show, and I was like, hmm, that, that, I'm stealing that. Thank you, sir. Also, yeah, no, texture. texture. That's a texture. term I'd never... Uh, expected someone to throw at us in a positive light well that was definitely he, well you know he, here's the thing too i mean he could he could be hate watching it could be yeah. yes like, like, like i said we, 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 can, we can be rough be sometimes we can we can be smooth listen we we, can, we, we we strive to be the npr of linux podcast 
<laughs> and, and and fail miserably. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yes. I mean, it's like when the plane doesn't even get off the runway, it just bursts into flames and melts. And... <laughs> no, it just like falls into the puddle of water off right outside the runway. Right. Yeah. It doesn't even land, man. <laughs> no, it just it just keeps falling upwards and goes into orbit. <laughs> 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 the earth just straight up repels it and it's like I've had enough. Nope, we're having none of that. <laughs> just right. like helicopters. All right. It's been real. It's been fun because I think on that note, we're going to get out of here. Um, Jordan, uh, stay safe in Finland. You're going to be there for what, another week? Uh, another week and a half and then back for two weeks and then there for two weeks and then back for two weeks. And you can find him at the Burning Fool, Burning? Pedro. Where can the beautiful uh, pl- yeah. plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus? A little more active on that. I'm at unaccounted for on Twitter. That's F O U R or plus the little those on Google Plus. Okay, I'm, I'm I'm just just typing Vince to. Oh yeah, you will find me. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> I will at least read anything you post to me. I, I can't hundred percent get back to every single person. I'm sorry. I look at Google plus in the morning and I do every morning. I probably spend 15, 20 minutes writing people back. That's what I do on the bus. (laughs) So that is a thing. And thanks to everyone who are hanging out in our discord and shout realm static. It's kind of brilliant. We're going to be playing with that video stuff a little later and discord is going to get lit up and probably about maybe just over a month. So, um, we're going to be doing a lot of new cool things with that. We'll see you next week because it's time for the credits. and Maybe this won't crash. <gasps> well, it seems to still be working, so I'll take that as a win. <laughs> no, it, 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 in, in before Discord video functionality is Windows only. <laughs> no, they actually have the, uh, if you go to the options menu, you actually get to see the... Uh, video options mm. so no 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 you, you you don't understand they're just they're just gonna do a straight os check just out of pure spite well no here's, here's <laughs> one of the things you could genuinely have to worry about is microsoft's like competition let's just buy them right of a check that that is that is very much a thing um their that their own happen. wipe stuff is uh it's not doing well link or whatever but they, they tried to scoop up skype to improve that and That's, uh, well, Microsoft, uh, I don't even know what they want to do.